have this Volkswagen Jetta. It's here for uh, new CV shafts. As you can see, the boots are torn on both sides of the car. Um, so the owner wants me to do them, but I just noticed this right here. Yeah. Don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. I mean, I'll give it a go, but uh, no guarantees. All right, so I got the axle nut out on uh, the passenger side, but you can see the nut looks halfway decent. So that just moves very nicely. So let's go ahead on the left side of the car and see if we have any luck with that. All right, so I tried fitting uh, the axle nut on here and yeah, it doesn't seem like there's much to grip onto. So before I even attempt to remove it, I'm gonna try to heat up the nut just to uh, give myself a fighting chance here. Because it looks, it looks like it's one of those things where if there isn't gonna grip onto, you're really gonna get one shot at it. I might as well try to heat up the nut. Well, that was a failed attempt. Even on the very first hit of the impact, all it did was a spin. There's really nothing there to grab onto. All right, so once I got that axle nut off, the rest of the job was just to walk in the park. As you can see, well, you can't see. Let me turn on my light. Uh, the new CV shaft is in. What's funny is I did not have a 12.30 millimeter so I had to go to AutoZone and pick this up real fast. And then the new shafts actually just use a regular 12 point which I have here. So <laughs> don't you just love uh, you know, paying like $21 for a socket that eh, doesn't really matter. I don't mind having to go out and buy tools when I'm working on a car because you're always going to need it later on. Alright so it's uh, time to clean up. Everything is put back together got both of the CV shafts installed just gonna go ahead put the wheels on the car and torque down the axle nuts and that'll be it for this one just time to uh, clean up all these damn tools everywhere once again we are back with this Pontiac Aztec it's a Pontiac that never stops giving and it's here for no brakes the brake pedal goes all the way to the floor Check the reservoir already. It's completely empty, so that tells me we have a leak somewhere. <sighs> Can you hear the enthusiasm in my voice? It's cold out here, and I'm not really in the mood to be messing with this. But work has to get done. All right, so this did not take too long. We're right underneath the uh, driver door. I saw a little puddle right there accumulating. So if you look underneath the car, There we go. So that's where it's leaking from. The problem is, you follow this line back, there's really nowhere good to tap into anywhere around here. All of that looks like crap, looks like crap. And over here, it starts to get decent, but at that point, it's connecting to the rubber hose, I think. Let me go look on the other side. Yep, so at that point you just, there's, there's absolutely no point in splicing in right here. You know what I mean? You might as well just do a complete line all the way up to that fitting. So that's where we're going to start our new line. And then pretty much for the same thing. On the other side, it looks someone's already been here. I, I don't think that's factory, okay? So if we follow this line this way. Pretty much the same exact crap. Looks like crap all the way up until over there. And it's gonna go up. So this may need a complete line from front to back. No splicing, at least I don't think so. Yeah, the line's gonna come from somewhere down there and work its way up here 
So I'm gonna have to do a little bit more digging. It definitely looks like you may have to get a complete line on this. It is now the next day and I'm finally, finally getting around to this uh, Pontiac Aztec. So I know I said I was gonna put a complete line in it and I still am, but I'm not gonna do it all as one piece. You know, just looking at all the bands, it just, it's, it'll be a nightmare. Um, now I don't know if this splice right here was original because both sides look original on either side of the splice. So this back here looked original, that over there looked original. You know, if I saw a splice here and this to the back of the car looked uh, relatively new, I could, you know, uh, just speculate that someone's already replaced this line before, but it looks like the original line on both sides. So I'm just gonna assume this is a, uh, this connector is a uh, factory. I really don't know. Anyway, if it worked for the factory, it'll be good enough for me. So this end is going to go, uh, it's going to have this nut on this side and it's going to thread. It's going to get a flare and it's going to thread directly into the brake hose. And then this end is going to get a similar fitting just like that. We're going to put it in the same exact spot and then I'm going to repeat the same exact process going to the front of the car. And as you can see here, I'm using the original line as a template to uh, bend my new line and I'm just using zip ties to hold everything in place I think it looks halfway decent all right so I'm inside the house it's a little dark because our light went out so I'm using a small lamp right there um, but the reason why I bring this inside the house to make flares is because this type of line when it's really cold it's hard to make a good flare they never come out right so by bringing it in the house and letting it sit for like 10 minutes the line gets up to temperature and it fl flares very nicely the first time so here I am using the original fitting that's gonna attach to the uh, the brake hose on the vehicle and I'm just gonna go ahead and clean this up with the wire wheel but look at that flare just uh, perfect All right, and this side, if I flip it around, this is the side where we have our new connector, our new flare. We're gonna use this to connect the two lines. And again, another perfect flare. So it should uh, seal up nicely. Let's go back outside and test fit it on the car. All right, so I got the new line installed. Nothing is really tight, I just got it sitting there just for the sake of test fitting. So as you can see, it's threaded right into its original spot right there. Then it bends up, comes along here, and goes into its original bracket right here. And again, nothing is touching the frame. Everything looks good. Uh, got the harness for this right here that plugs in. And then it bends down and comes underneath this. Now there should be another plastic piece right here that retains the line but as you can see it's so rotted away that it just fell right off as soon as I touched it so I'm gonna have to figure out something else to uh, hold this line maybe on the side I'll put a p-clip right here or something but if we follow the line here goes our splice and you can see everything is lining up nicely it was the other end of the line that I have to pretty much rip out and do the same exact thing that I did for this side of the line. But everything's looking really good. It's fitting nicely and I'm really happy with it. The brake line itself is done. I still have to mess with it a little bit more to get it mounted and keep it nice and firm so it's not wobbling around. Now this line coming over here was a real pain in the butt. I, I know it kind of looks like a hack job, but um, there's just so many twists and bends in the original piece. It, it, was, it was almost impossible to mimic it, you know, by hand without, ha without having any special tools. Okay, so I actually lost my footage on this. It's why I'm doing a voiceover. I know I said I was going to run a line all the way up to the front, like to the ABS module or the master cylinder. But once I started looking more closely, it is a complete rat's nest of lines. And it just wasn't going to happen without removing all kinds of things and major components. And it's just, it's not practical. It's not worth it. Uh, so I ended up splicing in as you can see right here where the line actually starts to turn into a decent line um, You know looking back at it I wish I would have had a better game plan because I would have ran from the back of the car from the brake hose all the way up to here one continuous line 
but I really did think I was gonna end up, you know, making two separate lines. So now I have a unnecessary splice in the center of the vehicle. Um, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, right? So there goes the line right there. Uh, it's got that hard band right after the fitting right here because it has to be able to jump over this uh, pinch weld and go underneath or behind the subframe so it could mount into its clip right here and it just comes along goes into that clip right there there goes our other fitting and the rest just comes up and goes around here now for this piece For this piece, since it, it rotted out, I was going to like drill a new hole right here so I could put the, the mounting clip. But look what happens. See that? I did that with my finger. So look at that. With my finger. That's how bad this is. So you can't mount anything to it. Um, so I have to come up with something uh, something to stop this line from rubbing right here. Okay. Other than that, everything else pretty smooth right into the brake line now I've already tested it and there are absolutely no leaks at all um, so that's good now this right here was funny because when I first went to start up the car it would not start and it took me like three minutes to realize that I forgot to plug in the fuel pump module so <laughs> that was funny anyway so that line feeds this rear wheel right so I come back here to try to open up the bleed valve back here so I could bleed out the brakes, right? Now I give it two or three little taps, very light taps, because I know how this usually goes. And snap. So, at that point, we need a new wheel cylinder, right? Of course you do. It's the right way to fix it. But I wanted to try something and see if we could at least get the brakes working. Um, you see the condition of this car. It's, it's ready for the junkyard anytime soon. So what I ended up doing is actually breaking the line free, the one going into the back of the wheel cylinder, this thing, and I completely disconnected it, and I grabbed this fitting, which by the way, I forgot that my uh, vacuum pump even came with this, so I remember that like the last second, this is the first time I actually use it. So with that line completely disconnected from back here, I just popped this right on there. I started pumping up the vacuum pump and for about 20 seconds, 15, 20 seconds, uh, no, no brake fluid was coming out. It was just air. Okay. Then all of a sudden I started to see a stream of brake fluid coming out. So I disconnected it obviously. And at that point the line is dripping brake fluid. So I just go ahead, uh, reconnected it. Right. So that's the only bleeding I've done so far. I get in the car to check the brakes and the brake pedal is boom. Now when you're doing jobs like this where a brake line busted and you know air is just pretty much introduced into the whole system, it's either gonna go two ways. Either you have to bleed at all four wheels and it turns into a nightmare, or you could get away with bleeding that one line and it ends up working out. So I got lucky this time. And that uh that vacuum pump. It was a lifesaver super fast. It's the first time I actually used a, uh, that one attachment to bleed brakes and it, way quicker than what I normally do. So I'm going to start using that a lot more for uh, brakes. But uh, yeah, there's absolutely no leaks on my fittings. You probably noticed the brake lights are on back there because right now I got uh, pressure on the brake pedal. I even had the car running and just pumping the pedal. And still absolutely no leaks at all. Everything is solid. I just have to figure out how to make that brake line a little bit more firm and make sure it's not rubbing on anything. But other than that, the brakes are done. Okay, so since I can't really mount anything to this because it's so rotted, I decided at least I can try to protect the line. So I grabbed some fuel line. I cut a slice in it so I could get it over. And uh, I made sure to leave the slice in the hose facing down so that any water that gets inside of here could uh, drip out. Um, I think it's decent. It's uh, it's not a perfect solution, but at least I tried. Um, a lot of hacks would have just left it, and then, you know, a year from now, whatever, it would end up rupturing right here from rubbing through. And the fuel hose is not going to go anywhere because it's not going to go over this bend. It's not going to go over that bend, so it has no choice but to stay right here. Um, and that's pretty much it.
there's absolutely no leaks at all. I've gone ahead and sprayed all of my connections with some uh, corrosion inhibitor just to protect it a little bit more from uh, the weather. Also up front right here, I put a piece of rubber hose on this corner. It's not touching, but in the case that it does end up touching for some reason, it has some protection on it. Here I've got a Nissan Rogue changing out the CV axle. And uh, I tried using a slide hammer to get the axle to come out the bracket. But that wasn't going to happen. So, you know, I put like a good 20 minutes into trying. It wasn't going to happen. So, I just unbolted the entire bracket from the engine. And now with it off the car, I could try to remove that bracket. And have a new axle right there. As you can see, I got the axle and the press right here. It seems to be going. And there we go, it's about to fall out. Alright, let me uh, turn off the camera here because I don't want all this stuff to fall once it pops. But, as you can see, it's coming out. There's no way in heck. <laughs> I've seen uh, you know, some people on YouTube saying that it'll pop right out of here. And I'm sure in some cases it will. But in this case, without a press and taking off the whole assembly, it was not going to come out. Sorry for the mess here, but it's always a mess. And I know exactly where everything's at. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and try out my new tool. It's, uh, it's like a torch, but without an open flame. All right, it's ready, plugged in. And let's see if we could heat up this nut right here. Oh, look at that, it's already steaming. Letting out the smoke. That was actually pretty fast. I'm surprised. Okay, you can see it's starting to glow red. Yes, normally I would be done at this point. It's plenty hot. Look at that, that thing. Look at that. That's crazy how fast this thing works. It is still glowing red. Wow. This, thing, <laughs> this thing's pretty cool. Um, the penetrating fluid, I'm not expecting it to catch on fire so much because even with open flame, it really doesn't want to catch on fire. Trust me, I tried it plenty of times. Um, but the brake parts cleaner, I'm expecting it to, as soon as this thing starts to get hot, to just burst into a flame. So I'm just going to go ahead and spray this. Let's get this out of here. Alright, let's give it a go. Okay, and it's not. All it did was uh, evaporate the brake parts. The brake parts clean up very quickly. So that's interesting. I completely expected the brake parts cleaner to ignite. Well, I'm gonna let this cool off and we'll do one more test with this just to be sure. Um, yeah, I'd rather test it right here to see if it catches on fire rather than experimenting on a car. So here we have a Chevy Cruze. Uh, it's the one that I recently put this uh, like this water neck on down here. Remember it broke. Uh, so it's back because she wants me to look at uh, something that I pointed out last time, which I think it needs a lower control arm. So we're gonna go ahead and order that. But also she said um, maybe like a week ago she had some smoke coming from underneath the hood. It wasn't a lot, but you know this is the first chance she had to bring it over. So I'm looking at everything because so far I've replaced this uh, this water neck and I've also replaced the water pump, right? You can see the water pump back there looks pretty new. So I'm going to try to get my mirror inside of there, see if I can get a better look at the bottom side of the water pump, see if it's leaking or not. Uh, if it is, we'll go ahead and fix it. But honestly, I think... Her main concern with a little bit of smoke she was having come from beneath the hood is right here. You could see the valve cover gasket is leaking oil. 
and right below it is the exhaust manifold so you can imagine uh, once that oil touches a hot exhaust manifold it creates smoke and I think that's uh, what she was seeing all right so I used my mirror to get behind this uh, water neck down here and it's absolutely dry it's not leaking at all and then I used the same mirror to come underneath the water pump and check on it it's not leaking at all the reason why this stuff down here looks wet is because of the oil you can see right here we have oil like seeping out of here now I don't know if it's coming from the valve cover gasket or whatever gasket is uh, on the other side of this plate right here but it's definitely oil you can see it down there accumulating now normally whenever the water pump is leaking on these engines it's clear as day because uh, the coolant will seep out and then eventually touches the belt or one of the pulleys and it just sprays everything in this area so all of this would be completely soaked on the hood all of this, uh, this hose, uh, you know, this the core support. It, it's clear as day whenever the water pump is leaking. And honestly, everything looks pretty dry here. It's just all of this uh, wetness right here. And that's actually just oil from this. So I think the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and order a new valve cover gasket and get that taken care of. Here we have a Chevy Malibu. Came in because it has a check engine light with some EVAP codes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start poking around here and see what's going on. All right, so I just passed my local family dollar and Dollar Tree and the parking lots are jam-packed. It's crazy. These people are so, uh, it just makes me laugh. But I just went to AutoZone to try to warranty out this purge valve for the Chevy Malibu. Um, and I did not go to my normal AutoZone because they did not have this, the parts. So I had to go somewhere else. So I tell the woman I want to warranty out this part, right? She pulls it up on the computer and she says, okay, it looks like you changed it a year ago. And I was like, yeah, and it's bad already. So she goes, well, did you check engine light on? I told her, yeah, it's on. And she says, well, you should probably get the car checked out by a professional because this may not be your problem. And I told her, no, the part's bad. I put power to it and it, it doesn't want to open. I have to hit the part in order for it to open like it's physically stuck. And she just couldn't wrap her head around what I was saying. I told her, I work on cars and this part is bad. And she just gave me that look like, uh-huh, I've heard this a thousand times. You know, which I understand working at AutoZone. I'm sure you do. Uh, but she was really, you know, signifying that I don't know what I'm doing. I'm warranting out a part for no reason. And it's most likely not going to fix my problem. You know, based on the fact that she said I warranted it out a year ago. That's what she's going off of. You know, she just eventually gave me the part and said, well, good luck on your repair. You know, really sarcastically. So I'm not going to bash her too much because I'm sure she deals with this a lot. And I know there's at least two people who watch my videos that work at AutoZone. And I'm sure you have to deal with this a lot where you know someone is changing a part for no reason. And you know it's not going to fix their problem. Yet they are still there trying to warranty out a part. Now here's my question to you guys that work at AutoZone. Do you still or do you warranty it out because technically it's under warranty. So you should replace it right if the customer is saying it's bad. So do you just bite your tongue, warranty it out, and send them down the road? Or do you try to do what this woman did to me today and try to say, well, you're probably wasting your time. You should get your car looked at. You know, basically try to reason with the customer and try to explain to them that they're barking up the wrong tree. So, you know, for you people who work at AutoZone, how do you deal with that? I'm in a Nissan Versa Note. It's similar to the car I have. This thing is a freaking wreck. I've seen this car maybe three times before over the past few years. Every time I see it, it's always in worse condition. Driver's side mirror, held on with tape and wires. Passenger side mirror, doesn't exist. Front windshield, cracked. Okay, let's go look at the rest of the car. Rear bumper. Crashed. Rear wiper arm broken off. 
dents all over the car. It came in on the tow truck, flat tire, won't start. Front bumper hanging off in another accident. Look at this hack job of wiring. There was a mirror again. Look at this wiring. All oh, so many wires are cut up here. Like someone went at each wire with a razor blade looking for which one has power. Look at this. In here. That's like that too. I think that's normal. Oh, and the, this right here. Look at this. Wow. These wires, I'm assuming, lead up to this crap. I think it's for the fans. Someone hardwired in the fans to work on a freaking switch. What year is this car? It's got to be at least a 2015, I think. Yeah, it's a it's a late 14, so it's a 15 model. And it's in horrible shape. I mean, just I just talked to not the owner, but the person who had the car towed over here and he's like yeah she took it to some uh um alley mechanic to fix whatever was going on with it i'm like really this on a 2015 versa come on now what hack job this car looks like someone came across it with a blade see that just really pissed me off only because i own one of these cars it's like how my car still look like brand new hold on the window won't go back up it's like Oh, there it goes. Just whoa. All right, what's going on here? Oh, wrong way. Ugh. Okay. Nobody freaking told me don't open the window. Jeez. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Look at that. Is that kind of, like? Wow. <laughs> I feel sorry for this little car. I really feel bad. Just because I own one, I really do feel bad. It just, this car is going to end up in uh, Nissan heaven. Look at this. How does this happen? Oh, so anyway, it got towed in because they say it won't stay running. Really? Because I put a jump starter on it because the battery's dead because someone left the flashers on. So I put a, put a jump starter on it. It starts right up and it's running. I'm not sure what the problem is. One thing I see is we are out of gas. Not out completely, but that looks like it's on the very last bar. Well, here's the thing. The battery is completely dead, so we had no check engine light, but the check engine light is back again. So let's go ahead and check that. Uh-oh. <laughs> I think we have bigger problems here. All right, look, we're in park, right? I'm trying to move it into the garage. Let's go into reverse, neutral drive right let's hit the accelerator pedal and nothing this truck this truck this car is not moving can anyone say CVT Wow so come on they had to know about this so why is the complaint that it won't stay running when it actually does stay running well for the most part it stays running the real complaint said, hey, my car stays running, but it doesn't move. Try reverse. Nothing. Doesn't move. Low. Nothing. All right, well, I'm going to have to call them back and see what's going on with this. For are you wondering, are there any cars that turned down? Yes, it's this one. Okay. <laughs> a uh, piece of crap uh, obviously the owner does not care about it just drives the shit out of it drives it to the wheels fall off and then when it finally fails oh, i don't know what's wrong why would they do that well because you don't know how to drive you need driving lessons you let alley mechanics work on your car and you just don't take care of your stuff this is horrible let me go ahead and get the scanner and see what that check engine light's about but i think we're pretty much done here oh and i put some air in this tire and within uh like four minutes it's flat again so yeah I got my scanner here. Normally I would not leave a car running with the key in it. Well, obviously the key's gotta be in it. <laughs> but I mean, uh, running with the doors unlocked, but it's got a CVT, so no one's gonna steal that bad boy. All right, so here's the code that I pulled up on the ECM side.
All right, so I just got out of uh, that Versa note out there, the one that just pisses me off, <laughs> just upsets me. At this point, I feel like the, does anyone remember that crazy uh, mechanic, the one that was in uh, Seinfeld? You know, he would always, <laughs> like he would always uh, yell at Jerry, you know, for doing maintenance at his, on his car and things like that. Like, did you check the oil? <laughs> That's how I feel right now. I feel like that crazy mechanic guy that it like stuff like that upsets me. You know, it's like, how are you driving like this? She needs a premium. <laughs> I think I know what's going on here. And I just want to hear it from you. But I want you to be straight with me. Don't lie to me, Jerry. <laughs> anyway, here at this Hyundai Elantra, uh, there is what sounds like a wheel bearing noise. The faster you get, the louder it gets. Uh, and it's more noticeable off of acceleration. It's kind of weird. Uh, but I think it's the wheel bearings and the owner's like, you know what, let's just go ahead and do both of the front wheel bearings. So uh, not too long to get this stuff taken apart. And what I like to do is uh, before I pull out the slide hammer and pull the hub out, I like to remove the CV shaft and just confirm that the wheel bearing is bad. So there's no rough spots in it, but it sounds very dry. So yeah, this wheel bearing is bad. And uh, you know, with me confirming it's a bad wheel bearing, now I could go ahead and reattach the knuckle to the strut, uh, straighten the wheel out and put my slide hammer on it. The uh, hub came out without a problem, just a few whacks of the uh, slide hammer. And it looks like the snap ring is on the back side. So that means the bearing is going to get pressed in through the back side. And it's going to stop when it hits this lip right here on the front. Finally, cut the old wheel bearing out. The hardest part was the damn snap ring. This thing was in there good. Once that comes out, the wheel bearing came out pretty easy. Now I just have to go ahead and clean inside of the groove where the snap ring is going to go. Don't worry, I'm not going to torture you guys and go in there and start scratching that thing. I lied. A while ago, someone asked me if you could use a Dremel to pretty much uh, slice a race and then hit it with a chisel to crack it open. Yes. Yes, you can. That's just about it. As you can see, the hub is installed. Everything is nice and smooth and quiet. Just gonna go ahead and put the axle back in it, put everything back together. Uh, the hardest part of this job was that snap ring. And also today I got a pretty good reminder on why it's important to wear a face shield and not just glasses when you're trying to split that race because I had a chunk of it fly off and hit me right on the cheek and yeah that hurt I usually wear a face shield when I'm doing that but I don't know what I was thinking yeah just another reminder right <laughs> it is two days later and I'm finally getting around to doing the other wheel bearing on this Elantra and this one seems to be uh, slightly worse than the other side because I, I could actually feel little bit of play in the wheel the wheel bearing on the passenger side was making noise but i didn't feel any play in the wheel and when i took it for a test drive i could tell there was no more noise coming from the right side but definitely a noise on the left side here so that's it for this one everything is all done put back together i just have to put the uh, axle nut on and torque that down then just take it off for a test drive this head went uh i want to say easier than the first side but that's it for this piece of crap. On to the next one.